Not to get too far off topic, but I have a little bit of a bone to pick with the people who created that game, Shoots and Ladders, that we played when we were kids. It really gave kind of the impression that you could just kind of skip a lot of steps on the way to, to winning a game. If you hit the right spot, you could just jump over the whole middle of the board, right, and go go advance to this next space. But that's not really how life works, right? So in public relations in particular, there is a, a very clear first step to the public relations process, to the campaign process, to being effective as a practitioner of public relations. And that very important first step is just some basic research. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video is just some basic research information that is important for people engaging in public relations as practitioners here of public relations. So to start with, we're actually going to start almost, it's going to sound a little backwards. We're going to start with secondary research. There are two kinds of research, primary and secondary research. We're going to start with secondary research which is gathering essential information that already exists from the research findings of others. So this is, you know, other people have already done really the, the, the legwork of gathering this information and, and piecing it all together for us. And then we're going to use that information to inform what, what it is that we're doing in a public relations context. Okay. So this is information that we can gather from, from a variety of different sources. We're going to talk about a couple of different secondary research elements then. Um, places where, and, and things we need to get information on, including organizational background, a communication analysis, issue analysis, target publics and public opinion, and SWOT analysis. So let's take a look at each of these individually then as part of the important part of secondary research that happens at the very start. This is the very first step of any public relations effort. So first of all, we need to know about the organization that we're going to be working with, whether that's a, a, a a corporate entity, you know, somebody a business that exists for profit, whether it's a nonprofit organization, whether it's a government or agency or, or, you know, an individual, whatever it is, whoever it is, we need to understand who they are and what they stand for. So that starts with understanding, first of all, what is their product or service? What is it that they do? What is it that, you know, what is their basic function? in the in the marketplace that they serve um, what's their purpose as an organization what's their goal what is, what do they strive to do uh, it's sort of related to that is what is their mission and vision so a mission being who are we right now what are they trying to accomplish right now what are their immediate goals and then vision being where do they see themselves in the future where are they heading where are they taking all of this so we need to understand again who it is they are now what's their purpose and what's their vision for down the road here we need to take a look at the state of the industry, right? With the, uh, what's this industry doing right now? What's happening in whatever, whatever industry they're in, where's it at right now? What's, what's the, what are the prominent issues in that, in that industry? Um, what, what's their place in the market? All that kind of stuff. Who's their competition? So we need to understand who are their, their primary competitors or who are they up against in this, in this industry and in this market. And then we also need to understand then their basic market share and their market position, meaning, you know, how much of this market do they take up and what kind of what kind of share do they have in that? Or are they the number one name and number one, you know, service provider or, or product provider in that market? Or are they one of the little guys and trying to make a name for themselves? And then what's their position? Are they, you know, a high end type thing? You know, we see this division, for example, in, in major retailers. You know, there's there's jokes about how Target is now Target, right? It's kind of bougie. It's got this bougie reputation. It's kind of serving that upper middle class um, customer now, as opposed to Walmart, which tends to skew, uh, you know, in the market tends to skew toward a little bit lower income and, and things like that. And so we need to understand what is this organization? Where are they in that market? What's their desired position? What's their current position? We just need to know what we can about who it is we're going to be um, working with. And first of all, it's important in determining, should we be working with this person or this organization? Is this a good fit for me? For my, you know, we talked about ethics in the previous video, ethics and, and legal uh, stances. This is, is this a good fit for me in that regard? Uh, but then also just gathering some basic information, some foundational information about, uh, you know, who is this that, that uh, we're going to be serving and working with? And, uh, and so we have a basic understanding of who they are and, and what their function is and what their purpose is. So we have to do some basic research into their organizational background. Once we have that, then we can move on to a, a communication analysis. Communication analysis takes a couple different forms and can go, I mean, you can do it in a variety of ways, but um, first of all, we, we want to take a look at some externally generated messaging. 
By that, we mean things like media mentions. We mean things like what is their image and reputation it just in general. Um, so what are they, what kind of buzz are they generating from the external market? What are other people saying about them? How do they um, generate these things? How are they communicating with their external markets and, and, uh, you know, those types of things and, and what kind of result are they having then, um, in, in establishing that image and reputation? We also though need to be concerned with their internally generated messaging. Right. So uh, things that they are putting out there themselves. So their, their website, their social media presence their press releases, those types of things that are generated from the internal market. So externally generated messaging is talking about organizations that are and, and people are talking about this, 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 um, this agency or this company or, or this person outside of that entity. Right. So these are external factors. But now we're talking about internally. What is this organization doing to promote itself and to communicate with its publics? We need to take a look at their channels of communication. What are their primary, the primary methods through which they are communicating um, their message and communicating with those publics? And then what's their internal perception? You know, what, what, what do people within the organization saying about them? What, what are they thinking about that organization? So, um, so, uh, and we need to be concerned with what does that all mean? You know, how, how does all this, um, collectively then establish that image and reputation and, and how are they conveying it? How are they controlling that narrative through their communication? And, and uh, so taking a look at, at you know, how, what impact all of this has, um, positive, negative, or both. Uh, and oftentimes it is both. So we need to take a look at, at what's working well for them and what's not kind of get into that when we get into the SWOT analysis a little bit. But we need to take a, look, a basic look, though, as well as issue analysis for this organization, this industry, we've taken a look at the organization and how they communicate both internally and how, how they're being communicated about externally. So we need to look at issue analysis and understand that the past informs our present. So we need to, to get into what, what has been an issue for this organization in the past. What's their reputation been in the past? What are we working against? What are we working for? And, uh, and that past will inform what we do now in the present and, and shape the, the, present image and, and reputation of that organization. We need to identify and evaluate their public or publics, sometimes plural, depending on the, um, depending on the, the campaign and the organization and, and what you're doing there. So we need to identify, okay, what are the publics that this organization serves and, and interacts with? And then uh, how can we evaluate those in terms of what we know about them and do some basic research about those publics? We need to identify then opportunities and challenges within all of this. So what has gone well, what can we build on and what's not gone so well, what may present some roadblocks in the future with this issue um, for this, this particular organization. And then we identify then from that, the specific central issue, the client goal and the potential role of public relations in helping uh, solve that goal or meet that goal. Right. So, so identifying and narrowing down just specifically, okay, what are we going to focus on with this? What is the goal of this that you establish with the client? And then what kind of impact can public relations have in helping them meet that goal? So we need an issue analysis. We also need to identify again, <clears throat> our, our target publics and public opinion. Um, this includes both internal and external publics, because you're going to have um, influencers and, and opinion uh, shapers that are both inside the organization and are external to that organization. So we need to be concerned with both publics and identify publics in both of those areas. We need to take a look at primary, secondary, and tertiary publics. By that, we mean this is sort of, you know, putting them in a rank order of importance, these various publics, right? So our primary publics are obviously the, the ones we are most concerned with or the ones we feel like we can have the most impact in and generate the most um, productive outcome from. Secondary would be then, okay, what's the next level? We have some input or, you know, some influence here, but maybe not as much as, as the primary. And then tertiary would be those, you know, that are kind of on the fringes a little bit. that are going to be affected by this, but maybe not either. We can't have as much impact as we think we would like, or, or uh, just that, uh, that we don't think it'll be as productive to spend our time there. So we rank order these things. What, who are our primary publics or public, um, our secondary and tertiary then? We also need to be concerned with, in terms of the target publics, what's the current state? of this whole thing. 
What is the public's relationship with this organization right now? What is their present relationship with this organization? Um, and also just, you know, in general, what knowledge, attitudes and behaviors do these publics have toward the organization or and or toward that issue in particular? Maybe it's not about the organization itself. Maybe it's just about the issue that you're uh, tackling on behalf of this organization. So we need to know, OK, where are things at now? Where, where do they stand right this moment? Then we also need to be aware of, you know, and classify audiences into these three kind of categories, latent, aware, and active. So every public is going to fall into one of these three categories. Latent publics really don't recognize the problem or the opportunity or, or whatever it is you're talking about. They're just unaware. They're uninformed. It's not on their radar. So latent audiences are not um, familiar with and, and don't recognize that as an issue or as an opportunity. Then aware publics are, are those that were previously latent. They, at some point they didn't know about this, but now are aware of it and recognize that problem or that opportunity. So they are now aware of, of the possibilities there or the, the issue there. Um, so now they it's on their radar now, but they're still not doing anything about it. So latent, they don't even know it's there aware that there it's on their radar, but they're not actively engaged in that but active obviously is then you know that next step from aware once you become aware of an issue then you're moved to take action on that problem or that opportunity now you're in that active audience okay so there, every public is going to fall into one of these three categories either latent aware or active and we need to uh, establish which of these publics the primary secondary and tertiary where are they on that on that uh, on that scale and we can also conduct what we call a SWOT analysis. This is a very common term and a very common assessment tool in, in business and organizations. The SWOT analysis um, is SWOT is an acronym, as you either are aware of or probably guessed. SWOT is, is S-W-O-T, uh, stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. And it lays out on this quarter, kind of matrix, as you see here, um, where you know, on, a, on, a, on two axes, positive and negative, positive to negative and internal to external, right? So the S and W strengths and weaknesses, we're looking at those for internal factors. SWAT is divided into internal and external factors. So the SW has to do with things that are internal to that organization. Opportunities and threats then have to do with things that are external. So let's take a look at each of these just briefly in, in as an individual category. First of all, strengths, when we're looking at the strengths, specific to this organization and whatever issue it is that we're, we're working on with them. What are the strengths within this organization? What does that organization do well? You need to ask them and, and have them ask themselves, what do we do well? And what is unique about our organization? What are the things that are going to be positives as we approach this uh, campaign, as we approach this effort, as we approach this issue? What are some things that are internally within the organization that are going to be helpful to us as we do that? Then weakness is you look at the flip side. What could be improved? What resources could improve our performance then? What are the, some of the challenges that we may have in, in addressing this issue or, or relating to the publics or whatever it is that are internal to that organization? What are some of the, the negatives that may come up that we may need to be aware of and that may need to handle? Opportunities then and, and threats. Remember, we're moving to externally outside of the organization and opportunities are on that positive axis. So opportunities ask, are there gaps in our services and what are our goals? Where are some things externally that we could make some strides that we could do to to uh, to, to have an impact? And so what are some things on the horizon that um, that present opportunities for us in essence? Right. And threats then again is the opposite. It's external, but it's negative. So what industry changes are on the, the or market trends are on the horizon? Um, the, so in other words, what are some of the unknowns? Unknowns are always tough for organizations and, and individuals too. So what industry changes on the, on, the, on, the, on the horizon could present a challenge for us? And how do we stack up against our competition? What are some of the competitive aspects maybe? These are just a couple of the types of questions, but Threats looks at things. Okay, what are some of the things that could uh, be a knock on us here or be a challenge, throw up some obstacles for us? So we need to honestly look at, at this, uh, again, not just for the organization in general. That's something the organization can do on its own, but, but specific to, okay, this campaign, this issue, whatever our identified goal is, what are some things within and outside of this organization that are going to present strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats when we do the SWOT analysis? So, so with that, we can then, you know, that's all secondary. Those are things that we're drawing on things that people, other people have done all the way through the, you know, the organizational uh, 
background through the communication analysis, issues analysis, identifying and evaluating those publics, and then into the SWOT analysis are all secondary research uh, behaviors and, and secondary research activities. But we can also engage in primary research as a part of this. So primary research is where you, uh, as, an, as a person or as an, as an organization, are gathering essential information through research that you conduct or that you contract out specifically for this purpose. So it's, it's, it's primary in the sense that you are doing it yourself, though. You're not, you're not saying, okay, this person already did this, so let me just draw on what they're doing. You're saying this is information that we are gathering independently on our own in a primary way. And just real briefly, there are two different types of categories sort of, of of primary research, and we're just going to briefly look at what some of these are. First, you have quantitative research, which um, really has to do with more of a, an objective study. It's oftentimes tied to some sort of um, quantitative or numeric value as an aspect of that research. So things like surveys, things like content analysis and digital analytics um, that are able to identify specific factors and specific uh, data points in a quantitative way fall into that quantitative research. And it is, is helpful as it is objective, is not tied to someone's personal you know, viewpoint or opinion. It's really it, identifying objective information. Um, it can be a challenge. It can be hard to, to develop proper tools for this and it can be time consuming. It really does require a degree of expertise to develop appropriate tools and effective tools as far as surveys so that you're not skewing results and things like that. Uh, but it can be really helpful information. It is objective and it can be very uh, insightful and, and helpful as a, as a piece of this puzzle. The other sort of piece of the puzzle, the other category is what we call qualitative research. This is more subjective information, um, and it does require uh, and, and depend on somebody's viewpoint and and um, and searching out that information. So here we're talking about things like depth interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews that go more in depth um, than just a you know a rank from one to five or you know that type, kind of answer. It's more open-ended questions. We're talking about focus groups. We're talking about participant observation. So when you have a, a group of, you know, you're working with a toy manufacturer and you just let a group of kids loose in a room full of toys and see which ones they go after and then observe how they play with it. And those types, that's participant observation, those types of things. Those are qualitative research methods and can be very helpful too. They can also be very time consuming and, and you really do need somebody who's well trained in um, the, the process for gathering that information. But um, can those two pieces combine quantitative and qualitative research really can combine to provide a lot of really um, helpful primary information that you can gather yourself specific to um, whatever issue or whatever organization it is you're working with. So hopefully you now have a better idea of, of the importance, just the critical nature of research in public relations. No matter what model of public relations you're using, you'll find that almost all of the models of the public relations process start with an R. These acronyms always start with an R because research is that primary function, is that critical first step. There's no ladder to skip steps through this. You can't just, you know, and you shouldn't just rely on somebody else for this. You, you've got to dig into this and, and really put some time into the research uh, part of, of pro public relations um, right up front. That is an important first step. If you have questions about research, about public relations, about how they connect and, and the importance of any of that or anything else related to this topic, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that you will uh, develop some of your own research methods for this and, and, and begin to understand just how really critical the role of research is in, the, in laying that foundation and as a very important first step in the public relations process.